Hey guys, we've got to talk about practice and how you're going to log it for choir. This is a really, really important part of all sorts of, of performing and in an ensemble, how you practice makes the difference between what we can do um, as an ensemble. So it's super important for you to know that this is the one thing that's going to make you better. And so if you're not sure how to practice or you just decide you're not gonna, then it's not going to be very much worth your while. Please understand that um, whenever you practice a skill, especially a physical one, your brain is definitely involved. All learning requires your brain to be involved, but your brain's much more like, oh, if you're going to go hiking and there's no trail. You know about where you're going to go and the direction you need to get there, but you have to make your own path. And the more you keep going back and making your own path, the more the path becomes more real and the easier it is for you to use that path. So in your brain, we we have a whole bunch of coordination, a bunch of things that have to happen um, and fire at specific levels. The physical skill of getting your brain to tell your body what to do when you sing. These are all things that much like hiking in a place that doesn't have any established trail system, the more you do them, the more you set that trail system up. And so that repeating chain changes your brain in a way that makes you better able to do everything about the skill that you're working at. Um, and it's, it's really, um, I don't know, it's delusional. It's just delusional to think you could be able to practice um, enough just by coming to class because that's just not going to happen. When we're talking about measuring practice um, efficacy, that's just the fancy word that means, you know, how good you're going to get at it. There, we divide it into two different skill levels. The things you have to learn behaviorally and the things that you have to do musically. And so we're going to briefly look at all of these because on your, um, on your uh, practice log, you're going to be practicing evaluating each of these skills and i've put the skills in the easiest to the most difficult um, level that way you can see what's there um, the first one in behavior skills has to do with goal clarity do you know what you're trying to do what is it that you're trying to 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 work at um, if you don't have a plan well it doesn't matter because you you won't get there and if you do it doesn't matter you won't recognize it so make sure that you know what skills you're working to improve on you know what part of songs you're trying to improve on what music literacy things you're trying to improve on if you have a goal that's going to make your practice it's going to give it specific um, specific ways in which to um to, to go through things and to be able to know if you get there. Um, the next skill is focus. Focus can mean a lot of different things. Not just I'm focused while I'm actually singing, but I know what it is that I'm looking for. The idea of um, thinking about what you're doing while you're doing it is, uh, it's a big skill. It's really tricky. It's hard. A lot of times you'll do something, you'll sing something and you go back and you go, well, how'd that go? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. That kind of focus. The other kind of focus is um, I'm going to practice for these 15 minutes. Am I being um, am I being distracted by my phone? Am I being distracted by other thoughts? That's a different kind of focus. You need both kinds. Make sure that you're trying to figure out where your focus is. This takes some time. It takes time to figure out if you're focused or not. Um, and so make sure you're looking at that. The next skill you need to develop behaviorally is being able to tell if you're being effective. We already talked about effectiveness as um, am I doing something in the best way possible or am I doing it right? Um, if you, you need to start to ask yourself while you're practicing. And sometimes if you only do that while we're all together in rehearsal, it's not as effective. You're going to need lots of times to to interrupt your own process while you're doing it and go, oh, how am I doing it? That way you can change it on the slide. The slide. So um, make sure you take a look at all of these. Like I 
this is such a really basic front end um, kind of, of, of thing you have to look at. If you can't tell if you're effective or not, it feels like your practice is a waste of time. So um, musical skills. Remember, we've got three behavioral skills. Now we have three musical skills. Um, making sure that you are accurate. You have a piece of music and you can accurately and faithfully execute everything that's in there. Remember, music is a, a set of instructions on what you're going to be doing. So um, a lot of times when we talk about musical accuracy, we're talking about pitch and rhythm. So um, if you don't know enough about musical skills, um, and literacy in order to interpret what the music is telling you. Make sure you start there. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, those pitch and rhythm things are key. Notice this is not accurate words yet. Um, words as a singer are never as important as the sound and the pitch. Um, and it's, it's not that they're never important, but they're just not as important. And they're something that you can easily get to later. When we're taking a look, we, this kind of accuracy is very basic. All right. The next one is tone quality. Um, once you uh, understand what tone is, you realize that as a singer, you need to always be listening for your tone. Tone is that characteristic sound that an instrument makes. Um, vowels are super important to the tone of a singer. And so um, it's really important that you get an idea. Being a good noticer will help you a lot. Notice when I do something with my mouth or the space in my mouth, um, how does that affect the sound I'm hearing? And how does it affect my ability and skill to actually be in tune? Um, on, on the um, accuracy, and we talk about intonation, that's am I accurately hitting the pitches? Sometimes you're hitting the pitches, but because of incorrect vowel formation, which is a tone issue, it may not sound like it's in tune. And so um, we really need to make sure that we're taking care of those things. Notice we've done them in a um, rhythm, pitch, and then tone vowel things, all right? The next musical skill we have to take a look at is expression. Um, expression, and quite honestly for singers, this is where words um, come into play. Uh, you can't have words without good diction. Diction has to do with um, energy through articulators, right? And, and, and saying words correctly. Um, also included in expression, um, there might be clues in the music that um, is written in. Those editorial marks that are things that have to do with dynamics, phrasing, um, emotional things, the things that we do with um, uh, how, how we're approaching style, stylistic concerns. These are things that we will address a lot in rehearsal because I'm pretty sure none of you are really great at um, Renaissance stylistic considerations from a singing perspective, but you got me for that, right? Um, differences in style are things that have to be practiced. Um, and so make sure that when you're looking at those expressive things that you're also taking a look, am I a, what am I doing to communicate? And is that communication getting lost because I'm so fixated on um, the right words or the right rhythms at the right and and the right the right pitches? Um, sometimes we can be so overwhelmed by the skill that we forget about the skill of communicating. Um, one of my favorite theater um, coaches talked a lot about how uh, any any feeling truly felt will play automatically on your face unless you stop it. And most times for middle schoolers, um, there's such a rigid and mechanical expression and it's either because they are super afraid that somebody's gonna make fun of them or super afraid that they're not doing it right instead of feeling what's in the, the music. You need to be able to understand what is the communication What's the biggest part of the communication in the music that you will be singing? And what are you doing to communicate it? That can take a lot of practice. And that's practice you're going to have to use in a mirror, which can be uncomfortable for lots of people. Please remember that practicing is up to you. I can only do so much for you. If you don't take it home and work on it yourself and figure out where you're good and where you still have problems, I can only take you so far. Um, please make sure you realize that practicing is a lot of freedom for you. 
What do you think you need to work on? What do you think is most important? Please make sure you know that you can use music literacy in your practice or sight singing. These are things that are not normally considered practice for a large ensemble, but I include them because singers are super bad at them at first. Um, consistency, doing things every day, doing things very consistently, not just like one hour on, you know, the day before the practice logs do, but a little bit every day is much more impressive. Make your goals small so that they can be easily attained so that you can up your, your intensity the next week. Remember that anything you find is a problem for you in practice is something you could bring up during rehearsal or in sectionals. That's the perfect time to go, hey, I'm still having a problem with this. And then you can get help from other people or from me to help you know the best way to attack that. Remember, f most of all, that um, in music ensembles, you learn your part at home. And then you come to rehearsal to learn how your part fits with everybody else's and how to work in a team. And a lot of time, because singers need so much help figuring out the pitches, that does not happen. But the minute you can, we can do so much more. All right. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of what the expectation will be for how you should practice. Make sure you complete the study guide for this and turn it in. You can count this as part of your practice time if you did it outside of class time. So make sure you're keeping track. You can keep track on your phone. You can keep track on a piece of paper and you can keep it in your music folder when you have all of this. Please let me know if you have any questions and good luck. Thank you.